Welcome back to the Express at SFU in Burnaby. Our next higher learning feature on the Express takes us to a Vancouver camp where kids are learning about the Middle Ages, but not with a pen and paper. Instead, with a sword and a shield. Some kids play with dragons and knights, but there's a place in Vancouver where the Middle Ages rule and kids can become knights. Today you can pull out a gun and shoot somebody, but in the medieval times you would have to use a shield or a sword to get past somebody to get to them. This is Academy Duello's night camp. We're doing sword and shield right now and we're just kind of practicing this. We challenge each other to do different kinds of fighting and stuff. It's really awesome. Head, head, leg, leg. They get a basic overview of all the you know, history of the sword and what's important to a knight. And then they also get to learn about heraldry, which in the Middle Ages was the, you know, the science and the art that went into designing uh, and depicting a medieval shield. It's fun to maneuver around the shield, and then you also get to make your own shield, design them, and keep them. Put the wrist up too. Got across three. So this is my family crest, and it says per ardu surgem, which means to go through hard times. We teach them sword fighting, but we also teach them about the Middle Ages and about knights and what it took to be a knight. And what kid doesn't love a good sword fight? I just painted random stuff on it, and I'm making another one at home. It's one of the cool things. You get to make your own shields at home and bring them here. It's really awesome, and you should definitely get into it. I should? Everyone should. You bring it down, and before you hit... You well, Alex, you convinced me. Here to give me a quick lesson is eight-year-old Phoebe O'Donnell. Phoebe, what are you about to show me? Well, there's seven hits, and the last one is your head. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries, go for it. and then the head. Well, I have to admit, night camp is a lot of fun. And I think I also just got a little history lesson on the Middle Ages. I'm Bianca Selterbeck in Vancouver for The Express. Academy Duello runs night camps all year long. They also have lots of programs for adults, including Sword Fit, which is a combination of cardio and sword play. You can learn more at the website. You know, there's so many different interests out there and so many different ways of learning. Now, I personally think the best teachers are the ones that can improvise to make sure that the student gets what they need. And they know all about that at Kenneth Gordon Maplewood School in North Vancouver. We read in a non-fiction story. And what was it going to be about? Uh, biography. It was a biography. Excellent. At Kenneth Gordon Maplewood School in North Vancouver, Hannah Foy is doing what she loves best. Her father was very strict, her mother was quiet and gentle. They're energetic and they're creative and they just have such great ideas. Every time I give them an assignment, what I have in mind is eight or ten of them take it to another direction and they add this and they want to do this and they're just, they're great thinkers and they really question things and they really keep you on your toes and they keep you, keep you thinking. Yeah, it's a story about somebody else's life. Excellent. And what are we going to write about? Hannah's class is unique in that it happens to be all boys and also that all the students in this class and in this school have been identified as having dyslexia. How did it go with Jeff today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a good man, isn't he? We are a school that currently has a hundred kids and you can sort of mental model, picture a hundred kids with dyslexia and 41 staff. And all of us are trained and love working with kids that have language-based learning disabilities like dyslexia is what we do. Okay, so I'm going to read on from where we left off yesterday. The common conception, I think, of dyslexia is that people just read words backwards and they might read bed as D-E-B and just seeing words and letters backwards when it's actually, it's more complex than that. It's very different for a lot of them, but it's really just they can't access the basic sounds or if they see O-A, they might not understand that that says O. And even when they say words, it comes across sometimes they mix up sounds and letters. So it really has a profound impact on their reading and their writing. So our kids go to a tutoring every day. They have one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Can you tell me a little bit about your uh, characters for your novel? When I was in my old school, like I got in trouble a lot. I probably went to the principal's office at least twice a day. In this school, I'm, you know, a lot better. And in fact, last year I had like 10 out of 10 almost on every single spelling test we had. What did we start to make some points about? 
We use a lot of visuals in the classroom, so if I was to stand here and just talk with them for half an hour, a lot of it would just, they'd be lost in the language. So we use a lot of visuals to support what we're doing and cut out a lot of extra language. So it's just clear, simple steps and breaking tasks down. So, Stuart, how are you doing in your journal? Good. Can we read it? Well, the other school, um, I had lots more trouble because I didn't know as much as everyone else because I couldn't follow like everyone else could. This school, I don't have to ask as many questions because I'm understanding more because they're going a lot slower. It's a really good experience because you get a lot, a lot of more help and I feel like um, at my old school I didn't get a lot of help. I need uh, the agenda for tonight okay. and you have that file for the new student. Yes. Okay, thanks. The kids are fabulous. They love coming here and they have so many strengths and they're so bright and they love being successful in school, they love learning and they feel so good about how they're doing because they do achieve well here and they're successful here and it's just so much fun. Hey, and here's some writing that you did. Can you read this for me? He wakes up. In North Vancouver, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. Geisha, a very tall geisha, stands with her back to him. Kenneth Gordon Maplewood School is a non-profit organization, so if you'd like to contribute, for example, donating funds to provide a scholarship for a child, you can go to their website and click on Give. You're watching The Express, and we have more local stories and more local exploring coming up. After the break, Revelstoke Mountain Resort. Revelstoke to me is the mecca. I mean, there's so much skiing that I can always keep it exciting and exploratory. ICBC's 180 Short Film Contest. The Express. This is your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV. Provided by The Lounge Hair Studio. Loungehairstudio.com We will not do as we are told. We will not dump our friends just because someone says they're not cool. We will not be shy when we have something to say. We will not let boys have all the sports. We will not be afraid to take on challenges. We will not go on diets just to look a certain way. We will not be ashamed of who we are. We are girls. We will do what's right for us. Welcome back to the Express at SFU in Burnaby. Texting while driving, tailgating, excessive speeding. Seriously, risky business is only funny in old 80s movies. So today, our youth produced segment, Gen Y, is putting on the brakes with two award winning filmmakers and the ICBC 180 short film contest. Accidents can happen in the blink of an eye. Filmmakers from across BC were given 180 seconds to spread the message of safe driving. The 180 film, the short film contest was a, a new project that we were working on to try and reach out to young drivers age 19 to 25. Uh, we found that historically this particular group of drivers is overrepresented in crashes uh, and uh, we wanted to find a way to reach them. They pay attention more to peer-to-peer -peer style uh, messages rather than things that we would create for them. Around 7,800 speeding collisions a year leave 5,000 people injured. 150 in death. The contest produced many extraordinary videos. My video was specifically about speeding. Modern media depicts speeding kind of in a, a positive light when really, in reality, uh, it, it's much different. It, the results can be devastating. Fine. When you're speeding, um, you cut down your reaction time and you cut down your braking time. So if you're, say, doing 80 kilometers an hour in a 50 kilometer zone, it's going to take you that much longer to stop if something happens unexpectedly in front of you. Distracted driving is another major cause of car accidents today. Young people are more uh, tech savvy. They've got the latest gadgets, the iPhones, and they're also new drivers. So 
you take into account that when you're using a, a handheld device while you're driving, you're losing about 50% visually of what's going on around you. And your vehicle's thousands of pounds, and you're traveling 50 kilometers or even higher, that's catastrophic if, if you run into someone or someone driving. One of the filmmakers turned a personal tragedy into a powerful message for all drivers. Why did he have to go so fast? Was it really necessary? My aunt was driving, going to get supplies because they were rebuilding their house. And uh, she, was she was taking a left turn onto a street. And uh, the guy was trying to beat a red light and kind of hit her, T-boned her, and, uh, and she passed away. She was my friend. My wife. My teacher. My sister. And she was my mom. Like, even though, you know, you hurt someone in the car, there's many people that you hurt too that aren't even in the car, like my family and like other friends and people that just, you know, are close to that one person, right? The filmmakers really wanted to get the message of safe driving out, especially to new drivers. The risks involved with speeding or, or any distracted driving, use your cell phone while driving, uh, is it, just not worth the consequences. Even though we're not old enough to drive yet, we still learned a lot today that we can keep in mind for the future. This is Lindsay. And this is Helen, signing out from Gen Y on the Express. Gen Y is brought to you by Options, Surrey Community Services Society. Gen Y is a Shaw TV access segment, and so is our next feature in more ways than one. The content is community driven, making it access, and it also gives us an all access pass to Revelstoke Mountain Resort. Welcome to the Snow Show, brought to you by Snow Seekers with your host, Doc Powell. Live like a local these next few minutes and get inspired to why you should choose this destination for your next winter adventure. Step into the snow and make the call on what's best for you. Each week, Doc Powell discovers these destinations with the help of some friends. Let's meet this week's guy. Fly Boys is on his seventh consecutive winter with possibly the best job ever as a ski concierge. He's a constant comic who lives to ski and skis to live. Well, this is the nirvana of uh, skiing. It's particularly for people who want uh, vertical with full line skiing. This is it, and powder, it's it, it's here. It's surrounding us. It's magic too. Have you ever seen trees like this before? Like describe what some of your days are like because you've had what now, how many seasons? Oh, well, three seasons here and I uh, go home to New Zealand, back to back winters. Uh, love the whiteouts here because at home we don't have the trees. So for me, the tree skiing is where it's at. It makes you more technical, more cautious, aware, and it's also more beautiful and peaceful in here. It's just lush. We're actually in a, a tempered rainforest in parts and uh, you've also got a lot of moss and also lichen on the trees and it's just the, the gnar of them and, and the beauty of them but it reminds me a lot when you look around it's kind of like growing up and reading Dr Zeus books and all the, all the trees he used to have in the books so yeah it's pretty special. Revelstoke to me is the mecca. I mean, there's so much skiing that I can always keep it exciting and exploratory. There's, there's endless peaks in every direction. So it, to me, it's the easiest place. It's my home turf. It's where I know how to stomp vertical. And it's definitely, for, yeah, it's the place where I, I needed to be. Revelstoke is packed with places to be from the ski slopes home to the world's longest vertical, the powder packed ridge lines and bowls that play host to snowmobilers from around the globe. Rev up to the Glacier House Resort to get your fix. This is Stella, first class, off the hook, Nirvana. Now I've got to find a partner because I'm now sledified, I want to buy one. I'm, I'm done, I'm, I'm into sledding, sled ski, let's do it. It's just the, the best form of transport other than a helicopter to get around this place and get from A to B and, and fortunately you've got enough power to go uphill and uh, you get choice of either riding it down or if you're really lucky you could have someone take the sled down and you could ski down. It gives you access to so much terrain. It's pretty amazing up there. We have like tours from beginners right up to like catered to people that want to go rip powder all day. But basically if you come out as a beginner, we'll take you out and make sure you can turn and then you know you have about 16 to 20 kilometers of trail that you have to ride first. 
and so you get pretty used to the machine riding up the trail and uh, we give you some tips on the way and then we get you out in the open. We have miles and miles of terrain, like you get on a snowmobile and you can just go for 20, 30 kilometers and see mountain peak after mountain peak and it's pretty unreal the amount of coverage you can get in a day. With all that coverage in a day via skis or a sled, it's going to work up an appetite. Well, Karakubo fits in in the sense that people that want a little bit of more sophistication, a little bit more of a little something special, but also, you know, sushi is a kind of a mainstream for a lot of international people, but also um, city folk. They love that type of cuisine, it's healthy, feels good, and after day skiing, wow, is it appreciated. Me and the executive chef, Shinji, we don't care about like making money. We just want to serve the best food ever. Like, so for us, like the best quality for everybody. Revelstoke's massive vertical drop, 5,620 feet, is the highest at any North American mountain resort. Now, if you're looking for some entertaining ideas a little closer to home, we've got some with today's Express Spotlight on local events. Celebrate spring at the Nikkei Museum. A fun festive family day with something for everyone to enjoy includes sampling tea, folding origami, trying on a kimono, and enjoying entertaining performances. The work of UFV's fashion design students will be showcased in their annual full-scale catwalk style fashion show and final presentation. The Will Rogers Follies is a fast, colorful, tuneful, and dazzling Broadway musical, retelling the life of Will Rogers, the man who put a smile on the face of America and became a legend. There's also UBC's Storm the Wall event, and we'll have a half-hour special on that this Friday on The Express. Now that's it for today's show from SFU and Burnaby. We're going to leave you with a laugh from comedian Mike McDonald, and we'll see you next time. I always tell my American friends, though, if they want to go somewhere nice on vacation, they should come up to Canada. Because besides being one of the coolest countries in the world, it's probably one of the only places left on the planet where it's safe for Americans to go on vacation. <laughs> I love the fact that, you know, America is right next door, but they know nothing about us. They come to Canada for the very first time, and they always say the same thing. It's got smell. Jeez. As soon as we cross the border, that smells like everywhere. Yeah, it's oxygen. <laughs> 1992 in Florida, there was a freak snowstorm. Almost destroyed the citrus crops, but thank God for the farmers it didn't. But man, to have been there, oh, I would have paid top dollar just to have been there to see those vacationing Canadian faces. <laughs>